Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this meeting of the Prince Edward Island Electoral Boundaries Commission. My name is Gerard Mitchell, and I'm the chair of the commission. The other commissioners are, on my immediate right, Ms. Lynn Murray, and to her right is uh, Libby Shaw. On my immediate left is Kerry Carpenter, on my far left is Elmer MacDonald. I'm just going to make a few uh, opening remarks, uh, then I'll turn the floor over to you to uh, make your representations or to ask questions as you see fit. As you know, this commission is presently engaged in the process of drawing an 18 electoral district map for Prince Edward Island. And I hasten to add that this 18 district map we are drawing will not be the electoral map for the next uh, general election. That map will be the 27 district map that we drew last year and that was adopted by the legislature in May of 2017. The other day I met a fellow on the street and he came up to me and he said, you're doing a great job there. You fellows on that Electoral Boundaries Commission, you're cutting down the seats to 18. We've got far too many politicians on the island. And 18 will do great. I said, I'm, I'm sorry. I think there's still going to be 27, even if this new uh, um, system is, uh, is brought in. And, uh, and he said to me as he walked away, and he said, I thought you were part of the solution. <laughs> So I'm only part of the problem, I guess. <laughs> the task of drawing an 18 district map has its uh, origins in the uh, decision of the government to hold a referendum in uh, conjunction with the uh, next provincial general election. And on December the 20th, 2017, the Premier sent me a letter <coughs> which was tabled in the House of Assembly the same day. In that letter, he wrote... In the speech from the throne, the government committed to the creation of an independent map that lays out the 18 geographic boundaries inherent in the mixed member proportional model put forward in the 2016 plebiscite. To that end, we would formally request that the Electoral Boundaries Commission undertake this advisory work. This will ensure a level of public education essential on a matter of such fundamental importance in our democratic process, end quote. In short, then, the commission is to produce an 18 district electoral map of the province to be used as an educational tool during the upcoming referendum process. The mixed member proportional model put forward in 2016 contemplates a 27 member legislature composed of 18 district MLAs and nine at large MLAs. This commission's job is to come up with a map dividing the island into 18 electoral districts so that people will be able to see what that would look like. <coughs> in drawing this 18 district map, the Commission will be bound to follow the same principles and procedure it did in creating the 27 district map last year. In other words, we will be drawing the 18 district map as if it were going to be the official electoral map for the next election, although it's not. That we feel is the best way to make it uh, a good educational tool for the referendum. The purpose of this meeting is for the Commission to receive public input about where the various boundaries should or should not be located on the 18 district map. To stimulate uh, that discussion, the Commission has prepared and brought with it two sample maps, which are on the wall at the back, and I believe you were able to pick them up as you came in the door. The Commission is not committed to either of those maps. It may well be that in the end of the process, neither of these maps will be the one the Commission finally settles upon. Last year, when we did the uh, 27 district map, we also took two sample maps with us to the public meetings, 
and neither of them was the one that was uh, finally adopted. When it draws an electoral map, the Commission is constrained in what it can do by Section 3 of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, which provides that every citizen has the right to vote. The leading authority on the right to vote in the context of fixing electoral boundaries is the decision of the Supreme Court of Canada in the 1991 Carter case out of Saskatchewan. In that case, the Supreme Court of Canada held that the right to vote in Section 3 of the Charter includes the right of every citizen to have effective representation in the Legislative Assembly of the province. The Supreme Court went on to say that the first condition for effective representation is relative parity of voting power. That is to say, one person's vote should not be diluted compared to another's. And although parity is the primary condition for effective representation, it is not the only factor worthy of consideration. Drawing electoral boundaries is not just a mathematical exercise. Section 3 of the Charter mandates effective representation, not equality of voting power. Effective representation sometimes cannot be achieved without taking into account countervailing factors such as <coughs> geography, regional issues, community history, community interests, municipal boundaries, minority representation, and population trends. These factors can sometimes justify some deviation from equality of voting power. In Prince Edward Island, electoral districts are based on the number of registered voters. According to the records of elections, Prince Edward Island, this province has about 100,000 registered voters. Based on 18 parity districts, this would mean a provincial average of 5,500 voters per district. The reason we are here is to get your help in identifying any countervailing factors that have such a bearing on effective representation in this area <coughs> of the province as to justify some deviation from parity. That is to say, some deviation from 5,500 number. According to the Supreme Court of Canada, any deviation must be justified on the basis that it ends up providing better government for the population as a whole. Deviation is hard to justify in Prince Herod Island because it is so small and so densely populated. There are no major uh, physical barriers and there are lots of roadways and means of communications. You will note that on both sample maps, District 16 is much smaller than the other districts. That is because such deviation is traditional and has been considered necessary in order to provide effective representation for the island's Acadians. In 1996, the Supreme Court of this province ruled in favor of special consideration for the Evangeline Muskush region. But even with its smaller size, uh, uh, District, 16 of six, District 16 on our two sample maps, Acadians might not constitute the majority in that district, but at least they will have considerable clout there. On sample map number one, District 16 would be 23.8% below the provincial average, and on sample map number two is 35.9 below average. The Prince Edward Island Electoral Boundaries Act in Section 17.2 provides that no district is to deviate from parity by more than 25%. However, that statutory provision is subject to the constitutional requirement of effective representation too. 
If exceeding the statutory limit of 25% is required in an exceptional or special case in order to provide the constitutionally required effective representation, then so be it. As I stated earlier, our Supreme Court has ruled in favor of special status for the Acadian District and indicate that there is no reason to hold it to the 25%. Last year, the Nova Scotia Court of Appeal ruled that the Nova Scotia government had violated Section 3 of the Charter by not allowing its Electoral Boundaries Commission to deviate from the provincial average by more than 25% when it considered that it was necessary to do so in order to provide effective representation for Acadians and blacks. The Charter is part of the Constitution, which is the supreme law of the land, and any law that's inconsistent with it is invalid to the extent of such inconsistency. So that foregoing it was sort of the background and framework for our discussion tonight. I should tell you before I invite you to come forward <coughs> that we have with us uh, this evening Mr. Paul Allen, Manager of Operations and Director of uh, <coughs> Communications for Elections PEI, and also Mr. Terry Scott, our mapping technician. Terry can move boundaries around and to show you what the changes would look like if you suggest them to him. He, he will do that and uh, show you not only what the boundaries would look like changed, but what the numbers would be. Now, they, without further ado, the commission will invite anybody who uh, wishes to do so to come forward and make their presentation or submissions. I should tell you that uh, these proceedings are being um, recorded, so I would ask that you uh, uh, give your name when you come to the microphone. And we also have um, translation facilities for uh, French communication. Okay. We'll invite whoever wants to go first. Who shall be first? I'll bring the mic to you so you don't have to get up. This gentleman back. Just a comment on, uh, I guess it's Sonny's area, the Evangeline area. I grew up in a in a in Spring Valley, Oak Malpec Way, mm -hmm. and uh, it was called, I think, then maybe Fifth Prince or something like that. And uh, Leon Spernard and Eddie Clark were our members. Eddie lived in Lot 16. Uh, Leon's lived in the Evangeline area, so we felt not a part of anything for quite a, you know, I mean, Eddie was around as much as he could be, but Cabot Park, all that area. So uh, it's nice to see that the, the Evangeline area is taken or kind of put on their own like that. Thank you. His name. His name. Oh, so coming up front. get your name, sir. Greg Campbell. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Leonard McCardle. I was, when I first uh, seen the meeting and I seen the map in the paper, I was very happy to come because I seen they were cutting the districts down to 18. <laughs> and now you get here and tell you you're gonna, still going to have 27, which I think is a way more people than we need to represent the people of this province. And 18 sounded a good start, but I, I could go down less <coughs> yet. I mean, we don't need this amount of people to you know, to govern 130,000 people. And uh, the other nine that you don't have on here, I, I, I don't think they're gonna exist anyway, but I, I'm glad to see the map for the 18 anyway. I'll, have, I'll comment more later. Thank you. Any comments from the other side of the room? Yes, ma'am. I'm Margaret McKay, and uh, what I notice about these maps is um, a lot of the population is in the rural areas, and it plays off about eight ridings for the farming communities to about six, seven for the uh, 
uh, rural, the uh, urban. urban areas. Thank you. Um, and that really concerns me because the majority industry in Prince Edward Island is a farming industry. So it takes away from the clout of the farming community. Also, the ridings are extremely large. And I've been up through most of these ridings. I think the only one I haven't been in is I've been in the Belfast. I haven't been in the Belfast area that much. But the homes are scattered in a lot of those areas. There would have to be extension in the election period from 30 days to make it manageable for whoever's riding in these ridings because they're, they're immense and the homes are quite a district apart. So I can see a lot of difficulties from either one of these maps. Thank you. Anybody else have a comment? <coughs> Back of the room. Back of the room. I'll come to you, sir. Uh, John Curtis, Summerside. I just have one question. Okay. New Brunswick Supreme Court of Appeals Chief Justice Dupree told the New Brunswick Attorney General he had to act in the interest of the general public, not with a political agenda. So I want to know, the Liberals and Conservatives each received over $80,000 in the 2015 election. It's a political subsidy, you get so much per vote. So I want to know, how can the province take the political subsidy, hold a plebiscite, and then not have a, um, an election, in the next election, based on mixed member proportional representation? And for the record, I support mixed member proportional representation. Thank you. I can't answer your question because our jurisdiction is simply to draw an 18 district map. Pardon me? I hope so. <laughs> Any comments? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry I was late getting here, so you may have explained why 18. And if you have explained that, could you repeat your explanation? That was the request. We were in, the commission was uh, requested in a letter from the uh, premier that was tabled in the legislature to draw a map of 18 districts, which was inherent in the mixed member proportional um, um, plan that was put forward in the plebiscite of 2016. Were you, were you given any indication? Uh, I gathered these will be the ones that are elected by first past the post in these districts. That's, that's and were you given any indication how many others would be chosen on a percentage basis? Nine is my understanding. That was the proposal. So, well, I'd just like to disagree with the gentleman from the front who says that 18 is a, is a better number than 27. Okay. If you go back in the history of this province when there was a lot fewer people that live in this province now, for over 100 years, we had 30 or more seats in the, uh, uh, representatives in the legislature. And I think that we've limited ourselves. So I really wonder why you wouldn't be better off with 20 districts. And I'd be interested to know if your map, gentlemen, could show us what would happen if there were 20 districts and how the percentages would change in terms of represent, uh, voters in each district. Well, Mr. Holman, I, I don't think we can go there because our assignment is simply to draw the, draw the 18. We have no mandate to go to 20 or 21 or even to see what it looks like because our instructions are produce a map of 18. So I don't, I don't understand what you meant when you said that the guy who drove the map could show us different configurations. Of the 18. Very good. Thank you. Anyone else?
Lucy Morkunis. I'm wondering about Slemon Park and whether Slemon Park shouldn't be part of Summerside. It would probably mean that the uh, Summerside amount would be much higher, but Slemon Park is part of Summerside. So, so the map now has Slemon Park on it, or he the map person is working on it? Yeah. Yeah. In your, in your two maps, one map, uh, in sample one, Slemon Park is uh, in District 16. And in sample two, it's in Summerside. Sam in sample map one, it's up on the screen there now. Slemon Park is in District 16, everything west of uh, South Drive, I think that's. And uh, in Sample 2, uh, Slemon Park is included in uh, District 14. Well, District 14 takes a large part of Summerside Inn as well. Terry, can you tell us how many... Uh, voters are in, in uh, Slemon Park? Uh, yes, give me a second. You can hold on to that mic, Terry, because you might be busy tonight on the mic. So this is the exercise that Terry and the commission go through when they're drawing the boundary lines, where Terry will go through and uh, make some lines, and it automatically will adjust from district to district the voting population. You'll see that happen here. <coughs> so when they're doing the uh, boundary lines, it's a real domino effect. So if you touch one, it's going to affect all the other districts. Another question from the floor? Any comments? No need to be shy. Ivan Blanchard. Uh, question, do we vote on the two maps at a later date or online? Or? No. We have no input? No, we, we will take all of the information. We will, we will work with it. We will draw a map. We will take it to the speaker of the legislature and say, that's the map that we're presenting to you.
Yes, Mr. Holm. Coming back with the mic. Here I come. I didn't identify myself first time. Al Holman, former resident of Summerside. Yes. I was wondering if any of the MLAs or ministers that are present would say whether this 18-9 is locked in for the for the uh, upcoming referendum, or can the numbers be changed in the legislature? I don't know what they might say. Okay, here we go. Thanks, Paul. Um, Alan, uh, it's my understanding at this point in time that um, the government, um, the, the Premier, will be bringing a question to the Legislative Assembly for us to, uh, to discuss and to debate. Um, but at this time, we, we haven't been provided with that information yet of exactly how it's going to be uh, laid out or rolled out. That might be that. that well, that, that obviously would be a question for the Premier, which uh, you can ask him. I haven't had very much luck getting an answer as of late in questions. <laughs> Again, well, I think the my, answer my, to that is the legislature could do what it likes. Yeah. No, there's there's been no there's been no legislation. All we have is the letter that I received, uh, part of which I read at the beginning, uh, uh, from the premier, and was tabled in the house, and was spoken to by you, Mr. Edward, and you, Miss Bell, I think, briefly, in the legislature on December the twentieth. Um, I'm Chris Palmer. Can I ask a different question? Or are we still on this? Yes, you can ask. <clears throat> okay. So, and I don't know if this is a fair question for me to ask <clears throat> right now, but it, it's a, in relationship to the existing boundaries, and I don't know if you have that on hand or if you happen to know what they are offhand, but in one of these models, it appears that Summerside would have two, um, two two areas, which I think is 14 and 15. Mm -hmm. Currently in Summerside is 19, District 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23. And I think in the revised, um, the new one that's going to be used for the next election. That's uh, reduced. It's reduced to District 21, 22, 23, 24, so there's there's, there was five going to four, and this model gives us two. Is that correct? No, I think go, go, in the in the uh, map that was uh, decided on, adopted in May, it's Summerside. I think is maybe part of three districts, not four. A little bit of twenty-four. A little bit in 24? A little bit in 24. Okay. A little, a little, a little bit, bit in 24. 24. I yeah. guess, I'm sorry, I stand corrected. Yeah. There's a little bit in 24. Yeah, okay. Okay. So it goes from five to four, and then in this new model it goes to two? Is that correct? No, it'd still, still be 16, 15, and 14. 14, 15, and 16. Yeah. Oh, 16 reaches in there, too. No? Or yes? No. 16 is the same boundary, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. Looks like it. So is that two or three in this model? I don't know. Sample map two. There's two districts in Summerside. Two districts that cover all of Summerside. Okay. Thank you. Three in 
Hi, my name is Trish Altas. I'm the Green Party critic for Workforce and Advanced Learning. Um, I just wanted to say that, uh, first of all, I think that the, you've done an excellent job on your mandate of uh, creating two uh, maps that really do you know, represent 18, and, and it seems balanced quite well. I think both of those options you know, are quite viable. Um, I think it's a, it's a bit of a shame, though, that uh, there's, there's no representation up there of the nine other MLAs. It was mentioned, and I appreciate, I'm glad that, that it was brought up that, that there will be all, an additional nine MLAs. But um, that it's not represented on the map uh, is, is, is unfortunate. I think also that there's no way um, to gauge the, the reality that those nine MLAs would bring increased diversity to the legislature, um, which, when you're looking at the job of of an MLA and of the legislature, um, it is to create legislation that um, is in the benefit of all islanders. And I think that the wonderful thing about the 18 district map with the nine um, proportional MLAs is that you will see a diversity of representation um, and the legislature will be more effective in um, creating legislation for all islanders. Well, we can't put them on the map because they have no geographical boundaries, except that they are for all of Prince Edward Island. Right. Yes, sorry. Yes, sorry, just to clarify, I completely understand that. It's, I'm, I was commenting perhaps on the mandate and the exercise oh, of just creating just the map, which I think you did an excellent job. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor tonight? One of the problems with uh, making these larger, of course, for us was that the, um, some of the communities of interest that uh, we tried to respect when we did the uh, 27 district map, it's not quite so easy to do that when you're dealing with uh, uh, districts that are half as large again as the ones that we drew for uh, May, in the May of uh, 2017. Yes. Could you clarify what you qualified as areas of interest? It's a, it, it's, a, it's kind of a broad uh, uh, brush, but it's, it would be, you know, municipalities, uh, uh, school districts. Sometimes it's fire districts. Sometimes it's who you play hockey with. Sometimes it's uh, um, uh, where you shop. You, you know. To, do people from Murray Harbor, do they tend to go to Montague or do they tend to go to Charlottetown? Or same thing up west. You, you get, so there's a, a lot that uh, goes into it. We heard a lot about that during the, uh, the, uh, the last uh, group of meetings, but uh, not so much this time, and not partially because I think people realize it's <coughs> going to be a little more, it's a little more, well, not a little more, a lot more difficult to uh, keep those together. Is that helpful to you? So, so, so when, when does that information collected to help you decide what considered work? Thank you. I don't usually need a mic, but yeah. I will for this. So it's Hannah Bell, um, MLA for Charlottetown Parkdale. So my question is, how, how, when, when did you collect the information oh, to help you make those decisions and what are areas of interest? Public meetings okay. and, and, written, and written submissions okay. and our... But when, when did you get the mandate to do the letter? Pardon me? When did you get the letter to do this map? December. Oh, December, December 20th. So, so you haven't done any additional consultations from that, from that date in advance of coming out to do this map? Yes, we, we were, ha we're having five public meetings right. like this. Like this. We also have invited mm -hmm. people to send us written submissions okay. if they wish to do to so. To help inform around those areas of interest? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Okay. Joey Black here, Summerside. Yes, sir. Now, with the with this, is there going to be any uh, changes in the fire districts in Summerside uh, with the uh, the two fire departments? Don't know. Nobody told us about it. Is, is it going to make it uh, could larger? Make it, or? Could, make, could, make a, it could make a difference. But again, when you get communities of interest around Summerside, 
you know, we'll try to keep stay as much as possible within the district, within the municipality. That was a big thing uh, we were told at the public meetings uh, last year when we were doing the 27 district map. If you can at all, try to stick as closely as possible to the municipal boundaries because there's a municipal and rural uh, uh, interests are somewhat different. Not necessarily in conflict, although that sometimes can be the case, but um, just different. And how how much difference will these uh, will, will will the maps be compared to what they are, are now? Well, they'll be basically um, the uh, the uh, size of the districts will be fifty percent larger than they were before. In other words, in, in the uh, 27 district map, the voter population average was about 3,700. This time it's about 5,500. Thank you very much, Jared. Pardon me? Oh, Thank sorry. you. Sure. We haven't answered with the other question. Right yeah. Long, but 356 uh, uh, electoral electors in uh, roughly in the Slemon Park area. I have a little bit of, uh, what's that, north? north? North Drive, yeah, but essentially 356 in Slumman Park. So you'd like to see these added to Summerside on any map? Uh, Lucy Morakunis again. Uh, this was fascinating watching what the <laughs> computer person was doing, and um, and I didn't realize that Sloan Park was so far away from District 15. So, I mean, it's hardly practical to do, to do that. And I am impressed with all the fiddling that goes into doing this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, uh, and it, it, you've done a wonderful job. Like, I, I can see where it, limiting Summerside to two districts rather than three, which is sample two map, uh, is probably a good idea um, just to to keep things a little bit uh, closer together. Um, so anyway, uh, you're doing a wonderful job. Thanks. Thank you. The practicalities are, are really difficult, <laughs> really difficult to, to, you know, everybody can see pretty well, you know, change this a little bit, change that, but when you look at it, it changes everything else too. And uh, there are problems no matter what way you do it. Yes, Mr. Bevan Baker. Yeah. Thank you, Peter Bevan Baker. Um, I, I'd just like to talk a little bit about uh, Chris's point to the number of ridings related or districts related to Summerside. And certainly in the current uh, map that we're using from which all of the MLAs present here tonight were elected, um, there were five districts that touched on Summerside. I think it would be disingenuous to call them Summerside districts. You know, there are little yeah. tiny bits of 19 and 20 and 23. But uh, there were two urban, you know, solid, solidly <coughs> urban districts that were Summerside. But I think to suggest that we've gone from five Summerside districts to two is, 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 a, is stretching things. Uh, the, the other aspect of that is that Yes, we, there may now be two new districts, if we adopt this map and MMP, that are, that are Summerside, but of those, but we also have nine list MLAs who would also be representing, to a certain extent, Summerside. So you could argue that Summerside has gone from four or five to 11 MLAs, and all of those MLAs will be accountable to all islanders, and I think we can't, we, we can't forget that. Um, to Margaret's point about the size of the districts, it's, a, it's an interesting thing and I actually hadn't really contemplated that before, so thank you for bringing that up. Um, but I think it's also important that we recognize that yes, these districts will be 50% larger than they currently are, but they will still be in Canadian provincial district terms by far the smallest. That's not true if you count the territories, but from a provincial point of view, these are still very tiny districts. 
and perhaps the expectation of electors in each district that the MLA will get round to every single house would be tempered by the fact that we now have slightly larger districts. But I think the intimacy and the closeness of representation is not going to be diluted to any significant extent. Thank you. Any more comments from the floor? <coughs> Questions, observations? We don't want to leave Summerside this early. Yes, ma'am. My name is Lynn Lund. I'm the deputy leader of the Green Party. I'd like to speak to your point about communities of interest. Actually, I really appreciated when you were saying that, but I guess I misinterpreted it because when I think of communities of interest, I think of our First Nations communities. I think of our newcomers. I think of our French populations. And even though these districts are slightly larger, what I really enjoy about this model is that those communities of interest are significantly better represented in the legislature because with mixed member proportional, you see more of those people getting seats in the legislature. So I think whenever I'm looking at this map, I ask myself, what are we trying to create with it? And if what we're trying to create is a government that is truly reflective of the people of the community, I think this does it. So congratulations, I think you've done tremendous work. And I think map two is my preference. Thank, Thank you. you. Any more comments? Your preference? Map one, map two? Oh, here we go. There. Uh, I guess you heard from me before, Margaret McKay. Uh, are you going to have additional meetings with uh, Federation of Agriculture and those? No, uh, we're, only, we're going to have two more meetings like this. One in... Uh, uh, hmm? uh, one in Morrell and one in um, West, 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 West Isle. Are you aware if there is going to be education <coughs> sessions on all the issues relating to the, this system further down the road before they have the vote? I know you probably I, I, have no I, say I don't know any specifics on that, but I would fully expect there would be. I would say there definitely would need to be because I can see all kinds of issues around the whole situation. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not just showing up in the map, it's showing up in other areas also. Yeah. And I come from this, I've been around politics for, on the edges for about 10 years and uh, what the party leaders may want are not always what the people want. I'm sure there will be a good deal of debate and discussion before this all happens. Uh, Lucy Morkunis again. Um, I'm just wondering about, you said that you're calling for submissions. Um, and the last time I checked the web page, there were none, or are you are the submissions not public? No, they. Uh, I, th I think they're public, uh, and I have received uh, three or four the, this this past week. Great, thank you. Any more comments? Well, Leonard said he wasn't done. <laughs> <laughs> he promised more. Oh, you, uh, you've answered a number of the questions I okay. had in the course of the discussion. Okay. Well. Thank you. Anything further? Yes, Mr. Oh, here we go. Um, is, is there, are you waiting for a further mandate letter for the next stage or, or are you expecting this to go straight to the legislature? No, our, uh, our only assignment is to come up with this map. 
-huh. When we do, I'm going to take it to the Speaker of the Legislature, and as far as I'm concerned, uh -huh. that's the end of our project. Okay. So perhaps speaking to Paul. Hi, Paul. Um, but perhaps we could make a request as a sitting MLA that education and information sessions would be really helpful. Um, you know, given some of the comments and discussion that are coming up through these sessions, that people are asking for that. It would be awesome if we could sort of have that on the agenda before we get to the sitting. Anybody else? Questions or comments? Preferences for either of these maps? Uh, Here we go. Could we have a, how many people would uh, prefer, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Douglas Simmons. Uh, we live in Summerside, but we're on the, as you heard there, the last electoral meeting. Um, but we're in the, on the outskirts of Summerside, and I prefer Map 2. You prefer Map 2? Um, based on the relation, just that uh, district, um, district 14 goes around Summerside, mm -hmm. so that's a common interest right there. And are you in or out of Summerside? I'm in 14. You're in 14? Yes. Mm -hmm. On map two, yes. yes. And we're still in 14 on map one, two, I believe. Yep, yes. Now you will notice that the maps are, map number, number one is pretty much parity. Map number two is a little more deviation especially in the uh, far reaches east and west of the island. And that is because we have heard in numerous occasions that it's a little more difficult for MLAs to represent rural districts than is the case with urban. But uh, still, there's not a, a lot of deviation uh, Justified, we don't think, but there is some. How many uh, people here would prefer <coughs> map number one to map number two? All, all the hands up for map number one. Two for map number one, right now. Three. Three. Uh, how many for map number two? Yeah. So it's the one with a little more deviation. Okay. Any further questions? Are we done? Hmm? Yeah. Anything, Anything you wish to say? No. No. Well, thank you very much for coming. We appreciate your input, and uh, we'll do the best we can with what we have learned. Thank you. <laughs>